Hey guys, how you doing? Scott here from scottsbassessons.com and in this lesson I want to talk about taking control of the full register of your instrument. As bass players we've got a real bad habit of thinking root upwards and this is specifically going out to four string players as well. Guys, you are, you know, if you're anything like me, I was super, super guilty of this. You're missing out on half the fun, okay? And that's what I'm going to talk about in this lesson. Let's check it out. Okay, so what do I mean by missing out on half the fun? Well, and why have I said that this is, you know, I'm aiming this lesson at four string players um, and not so much five string players, and I'm sat here on a five string, okay? Now, don't worry, if you are a five string player, do not click away, because the stuff that I'm going to be talking about in this lesson is really, really going to help you out, okay? So, I'm just going to give you a, a, a bulleted um, idea of how the bass player's mind works normally, okay? We normally think of roots first, okay? If somebody's like, oh, we've got this a groove, okay, and it's a on a D7 chord, okay, so the guitar player is playing um, that kind of thing, okay, we're going to think, okay, it's a D7, okay, and we're going to play our root, our, our note. Okay, we're going to be always in our mind, we'll gravitate to that root. Now, if you've got a little bit further than roots and you're into creating your own bass lines, what you'll understand, and if you don't already, um, if you can't already create your own bass lines, make sure you go over to scottsbassessons.com. There's a ton of videos on there that'll help you do that. Um, just go to the lessons library and take a search in bass lines and grooves. But if you're into creating your own bass lines, you'll know that as a bass player, we have to do exactly what the guitar players are doing. We need to outline the chords, okay, that the guitar players are playing, but we need to do it um, in a more linear way. So instead of playing the chord all at once down here, we're going to use the notes of the chord to outline the chord. Okay, and we're, on, we're playing over a D7 chord. So that gives us a root, F sharp is our major third, A is the fifth, C is the flat seven, and then D is the root. Okay, nice big D down there. So if you're anything like me, or how I used to be, I'd always think, okay, so root, and then I can use the third, and then I can use the fifth, and I can use the seventh, and then I can use a combination of those uh, notes Okay, we're using those notes to outline the sound of the chord so even if the guitar player stopped playing, the audience that's listening to us, they can still hear the sound of the chord. So that's how, you know, we create bass lines. And again, if you haven't checked that out on scottsbassessons.com, go over there. There's a ton of free stuff for you. Here's the deal. Because we're bass players and we're so fixated on the root, because that's how we learn. You know, we learn to play the root first and then build up from there, root, third, fifth, seven. We forget that there's the third, the fifth, below the actual root, okay? These, that, that third there, that F sharp, is down here. That A is down there. So what you'll see is, bass player is taking full, making full use of these notes here, and sometimes the, the fifth down here, Remember that we've got an F sharp all the way down there, and it's so powerful to use those notes. So if you're playing a four string bass, you know, kind of the dreaded keys 
for four string bass players are E flat, D, yeah, D flat, C, B, B flat, and then, well, B, B flat's okay, but anything below B flat, these notes are no enough, low enough to sound, you know, big and fat in the band. But if you're stuck on, you know, that D, E flat, D flat area on a four string, sometimes you feel like there's no low end. You can't create any low end and you end up thinking, oh, I wish I had a five string and all those things. Okay, here's the deal. There are notes down here you can use. So, for instance, on this D7 groove, you know, you've got that note down there, F sharp, then to the fifth, then to the B, and then to the A, and then back to the D. And the first time I came across this actually is when I was playing Superstition years ago. Stevie Wonder, right? low G's down there. I've got this all this chromatic run up to the fifth, which is the B flat. So don't just get stuck on that E flat and just thinking, oh, I wish I had a five string, okay? Forget about this fifth string. Okay, we can use all those low notes there. Again, let's take another um, key that I used to dread playing in, the key of C, okay? Because That's where I used to get stuck, around that kind of area. But what's the third of C? Okay, the third of C, C, D, E is E. We've got that massive big E low note that we can now introduce into our bass line. So instead of... Okay, yeah, I'm use, using the, the fifth string there on that low C, but you know, guys, don't forget that the, those thirds and the fifths, they exist down low as well. So let's just take a simple riff, just so we can get this into our playing, um, and learn this riff as a way of learning this, you know, using these lower thirds. And what you should think to yourself is just as we remember a fifth, you know, if you're anything like me, you remember how to play a fifth because of the, the pattern on the fingerboard, root to fifth, up two frets, down one. And the a major third is down a, down a string and back a fret. Okay, well, them lower thirds, so if it was a D for instance, that's, that's the, the shape there. So down four frets and up one string, down to the lower string. There's the D, there's the F sharp. Let's try it on F. There's the F, there's the lower A. Okay, now let's go back to this D, this D7, and create a riff over that so we can get this into our plane. Just over a D7 chord. Remember we've got D, F sharp, A, C, and D, but we've also got that flat seven down there, C. We've got the fifth, which is the A, and then we've got the F sharp. So the riff is gonna sound just like this, and then I'm gonna take you through it. Two, three, four. Okay, so it's super simple, the actual construction of it, but this part here is something I used to miss out so much on. 
especially when I was playing four string. It's easier on a five because the D's there. And again, you're thinking root, upwards root, third, fifth. What I want you to understand is that we need to be able to think downwards, root, fifth, third, okay? Root, fifth, third. Or root, seven, fifth, third. Again, here's the riff. Two, three, a four. So we've got just the, it's two, three, four. Okay, so the beginning of it is super simple. Just the, again, is over D7, the flat seven to the root, and then the same, an octave higher, two, three, four. Okay, dead simple. And what's cool about this actually is it's making you, you know, start on a different note other than the root note as well. You know, so many people when they when they're creating bass lines always start on the root note. You, you can break away from that as we're doing here. Two, three, a four. <laughs> and then the last little bit up here is. It's just the sixth to the flat seven again. There's the scale, okay? So just that B to the C. Two, a three, four. Okay, two. Okay, now let's add this low bit in. So we've got. Okay, that bit there. So it starts with the ba ba. So what's good, really going to help is if we focus in on the notes and then we're going to loop that section. If you're ever learning a riff and you're having problems with it, find a particular section and then loop it. So just this section is. So really slowly. So it's seven to the root and then to the third, that lower third that this whole tutorial is about, lower third walks up to the fifth chromatically. And then B, A, that's the sixth again. And then ba, ba. So we've got two, three, four. Two, whole riff. And there we're using those lower thirds. Again, it's getting into the mind that shape. Okay, the, the root to the lower third. You use it on stuff like superstition. Yeah? So let's hear the riff up to speed. Two, three, four. Okay, 
Okay, so hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. Remember, apply this with, you know, use those shapes. Learn that shape and apply it to all your major type grooves, you know, and especially when you're on the, the C. Get that low E on the, on the C, if you're grooving in C. Okay, get it in there. If it's a minor groove, the minor thirds. If it was D minor instead of D7, we've got an F as the, so, do the off the top of my head. Okay, we've got those low Fs that we can put in the groove. So instead of thinking bottom up, think bottom down as well. Make sure you're doing that. There's a ton of stuff that you're missing out on if you're not. Hopefully you enjoyed this lesson. If you did, go over to Scott's Bass Lessons and check out what we've got over there. We've got a full academy with all types of shenanigans going on. I'll let the, uh, I'll let the site do the talking for me. So go to, to scottsbassessons.com and check it out and hopefully I'll see you over there. Take it easy and I'll see you next time in the shed. Mm -hmm.